our introduction to the Kingdom Hearts series pretty much took place on the Destiny Islands, and for right now we don't really know if that's where the series will finally end. However, in at least each of the numbered games, we do return in some form or fashion to the Destiny Islands towards the end, if not at the very end, of the numbered titles. And we've already seen glimpses of how relevant the Destiny Islands were, even as far back as when Xehanort was a young boy. But I think there's a little bit more to the Destiny Islands than what we've seen so far, and perhaps a part of Missing Link or Kingdom Hearts 4, or even future Kingdom Hearts titles, could further explain just how important the Destiny Islands really are. Welcome back y'all, this is your girl Empowered Muse, and today we're going to talk about just what made the Destiny Islands so central to the Kingdom Hearts story. Outside of it being the place where Sora and Riku were born and where Kairi landed as a young girl. So not only is the Destiny Islands where we essentially begin the Kingdom Hearts series after Sora's dive to the heart introduction, but it's also been a place where we've seen critical moments and even resolutions take place throughout the Kingdom Hearts story. But outside of basically being a landing spot for certain points in the Kingdom Hearts story, I think there's actually more to the Destiny Islands than we've seen thus far. So kind of right out the gate, we got to see the Destiny Islands being a sort of bridge or gateway to, of all things, the Realm of Darkness. This is kind of alluded to in the first Kingdom Hearts game, on the night that Darkness took over and destroyed the Destiny Islands, as well as towards the end of the game, when the remnants of the Destiny Islands are part of the end of the world beyond the final door, when the door to the secret place led to the door to darkness that had to be closed after Ansem, Seeker of Darkness, was defeated. However, we see this again in Kingdom Hearts 3, when Sora's heart led him back to the Destiny Islands briefly in order for him to borrow the Master's Defender to once again use the door of the secret place on the island as a gateway to the Realm of Darkness in order to help Riku and King Mickey recover Aqua. And while the Destiny Islands, and specifically the door within the secret place, isn't always accessible throughout the Kingdom Hearts story, I did think it was interesting that at certain points in the series, it did end up leading to either the door that opens to the Realm of Darkness, or just straight to the Realm of Darkness. And that's not to say that Darkness is born out of somewhere on the Destiny Islands, but rather it definitely seems to be a critical point where one could access the Realm of Darkness at least some of the time. So I guess in that sense, part of the Destiny Islands could be used as a sort of portal to get to the Realm of Darkness if needed. But outside of being a sort of indirect path to accessing the Realm of Darkness, it also seems like the Destiny Islands have been a birthplace for Destiny, or rather for those blessed by Destiny. So we actually don't really get anything concrete on this point until well into the series when we play or watch the very end of Kingdom Hearts Dark Road. But before then, it did seem to be inferred that the Destiny Islands were important places of origin for quite a few characters in the Kingdom Hearts story. Obviously, it seems that Sora and Riku were born there, and Kairi grew up there after she came from Radiant Garden. But even before Kingdom Hearts Dark Road confirmed it, we got the inference that Xehanort also grew up there for some time in Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, when Terra saw a younger version of Xehanort as he was watching a young Riku. And so while we have people who originated in some part from the Destiny Islands, we also have some critical moments where Destiny was shaped in one way or another as well. For example, it was the Destiny Islands where Terra met Sora and Riku, and conducted the Keyblade Bequeathing Ceremony with Riku. This was also the place where young Xehanort not only learned of his place as a potential child of Destiny from the Elder Player, but also where Xehanort's journey basically began when his future self approached him and guided him to take the Dark Corridors to Scala at Kylum. Additionally, this was a place where Xehanort was directed by his future self to travel through time and find 13 Seekers of Darkness in order to kick off the Keyblade War with the Seven Guardians of Light. So it seems that a lot of moving parts to the Great of Destiny involving Sora, Riku, Xehanort, and the general concept of summoning Kingdom Hearts began in one way or another on the Destiny Islands. The Destiny Islands also seem to serve as a place of refuge for a few characters. While it was the case that the spell Aqua placed on Kairi's charm led her to Sora, the islands themselves seemed to represent a safe place one could go if needed. Xehanort also technically benefited from the Destiny Islands being a place of refuge when the Elder Player as its caretaker took him and hid him away on the islands so that darkness wouldn't reach him. So while Xehanort technically wasn't born on the Destiny Islands, he was raised there from infancy until he was a young teenager and ventured to Scala at Kylum through the Dark Corridors. Additionally, this was also the place where Xehanort brought a Shattered Ventus after extracting Venetus from him, where Ven began to show signs of his heart's recovery after it seemed to connect with Sora's. 
And this occurred a second time after Vin fought Vanitas, which resulted in his heart shattering once more and finding refuge in a young Sora when Sora felt Vin's sadness and reached out to him on the Destiny Islands. So again, some of these instances seem to occur because of the Destiny Islands themselves, like the elder player taking and raising Xehanort on the islands in order to ensure that Xehanort, who was then assumed to be the child of Destiny, was safe from darkness, while some instances could have been because Sora just happened to be born or live on the Destiny Islands, like when Ventus connected to Sora's heart and Kyrie landed on the Destiny Islands because the one who could protect her was there. But all in all, I think there's just a little bit more to the Destiny Islands than we may have originally thought. If we take the instance of the Elder player raising a young Xehanort there in order to avoid darkness, but also ensure the safety and prophecy of the assumed Child of Destiny came to fruition, there must have been something more about the Destiny Islands. Specifically, I'm very curious about this prophecy of the Child of Destiny and how exactly did it know that the Isles of Destiny or the Destiny Islands would be the source from where the Child of Destiny held. And it's not 100% clear whether this prophecy of the Child of Destiny came from the same book of prophecies that we saw in Kingdom Hearts Union Cross and Key Back Cover. Actually, there may be reason to believe that the Child of Destiny prophecy might have come from another source, considering the main concerns about the book of prophecies, at least from the foretellers at the time, were the day when light would expire and a traitor among the foretellers. It seems that if the Child of Destiny prophecy was in fact within the Book of Prophecies, the Foretellers wouldn't be as worried and preoccupied about the day when light would expire. Because according to the Child of Destiny prophecy, the Child of Destiny would prevent light from expiring. And while it seems that the majority of the Book of Prophecies is pretty valid, with the exception of course of the lost page detailing the traitor among the Foretellers, this means that maybe the Child of Destiny prophecy could be the real lost page of the Book of Prophecies. But this does bring in the question of what significance does the Destiny Islands hold when it comes to the Child of Destiny, a place of refuge for someone like Xehanort, and even the events that transpired throughout the Kingdom Hearts series. And I think that the reason the Destiny Islands were even mentioned as a part of the Child of Destiny prophecy is perhaps because the Destiny Islands sort of serve as a source of light. Of course, this isn't to say that the Destiny Islands would be the only source for light, but perhaps this become a source of light after the fall of Daybreak Town, and after it seems that darkness might have taken over Scala at Kylum, at least during the days of Missing Link and right when Xehanort was born. So it could be the case that the Destiny Islands kind of originated as sort of this new haven for light and Keyblade welders. But I think that we even notice hints of this in Birth by Sleep when Terra found the Destiny Islands because that warmth of light was drawing him in. And this light might have simply been explained as the mere existence of Sora and Riku, but even the fact that Sora and Riku did come from the Destiny Islands kind of supports this notion that the islands aren't as unassuming and are actually a special place from which light can appear and thrive. While the Destiny Islands were seen as the starting point for the Kingdom Hearts series, it's clear that these islands hold more significance throughout the story than we may have originally thought. Where I think we may find some more answers about the significance of the Destiny Islands is in Missing Link especially when it comes to the Child of Destiny prophecy and how it became essentially a place of refuge. And so I think we'll have a few more actions and hopefully interactions with the Destiny Islands in Missing Link and perhaps later in the Lost Master arc. But I want to hear from you, so let me know what you think about the importance of the Destiny Islands in the comments below. If you want to explore some more Kingdom Hearts theories, I'll be linking another Kingdom Hearts theory video here in the end screen. And as always, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video and want to watch more Kingdom Hearts content. And if there's anyone who may have questions about what to expect for the upcoming Kingdom Hearts games, be sure to share this video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.